Hi everybody, it's Russ from My Hammers Eleven. Hope you're safe and well. Do you ever get deja vu sometimes? Anyway, um, <laughs> a little in joke, me and Ollie. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit that bell icon so you made aware any time I put new content on. Videos are daily, but sometimes two, three times a day. And every interview, every guest, every player we talk about, every moment is priceless. So make sure you hit that bell icon so you don't miss any content. Lots of great guests coming up, particularly as obviously we're coming to the end of the season now. You know, we've had our, um, our football fix, you know, our rapid football fix, and now it's nothing after Sunday. But um, we'll be carrying on to keep you uh, entertained during the off-season. Um, loads of great guests, including today's guest, uh, Holly Worthington. Hi, Holly. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. How are you? Thank yeah, you I'm all right. Yeah, no problem at all, at all, at all. Isn't technology lovely sometimes? Right, especially Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Holly, how's, uh, how's lockdown been treating you? How's, uh, how's everything been going on the last few months for you? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a strange few months. Um, it's definitely made me realise as well how much of my life is football, because as soon as kind of that came to a stop, and then my work, I also got put on furlough. I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, so I've been just trying to keep busy, really. Been doing quite a lot of exercise and trying to get better with some football tricks and not doing too well, but <laughs> trying to get better at all of that. So, um, yeah, just keeping busy, trying to keep sane as much as possible. What about yourself? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's what it is, you know, uh, yeah. Work's been very busy. Um, you know, I, I work in. I don't do this full time, obviously. Um, not yet. Maybe one day. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but uh, no, we've worked. No, work's busy. Yeah, I work in a market market research company. So yeah, if, oh, okay. everyone, everyone wants to find out what's going on with everyone. Give <laughs> <laughs> the answers. <laughs> yeah, so exactly, that's what we do. But um, no, it's been alright. And I know what you mean about football. Um, you don't realize how much you miss football until you haven't got it. And like for that hundred day period, it was like. Huh. <laughs> and uh, and then and then when the realization came that we were going to do restart, I was actually a bit gutted, really, because yeah. then I had to start worrying about West Ham again, and I was quite—he <laughs> got quite used to sort of not looking at a league table and and thinking back and looking at old games, and then it all came a bit real, and even more so for the first couple of games, wasn't it, where we didn't really uh, didn't really turn up, to be fair. Um, mm. And then going forward, you know, obviously, then you know the last few games have been brilliant, and we can go into Sunday with you know a bit of a. Uh, a relaxed attitude. I can't remember the last time yeah. I've been relaxed. Yeah, that often, do we? No, <laughs> no, I can't remember the last time I've been relaxed at a West Ham game. But um, no, yeah, it is what it is. And uh, you know, we've always done the boys done the jobs, and uh, and yeah, look forward to obviously Sunday, and then you know, obviously Suchet signing as well, which is good. Yeah, I just saw. Yeah, Very which is brilliant. That. Um, so What's that's new? really really good. <laughs> He's been brilliant, and he since restart. He's been. I mean, oh. he's been he's been great to be signing, but he's been even more so the last few weeks. Yeah, he's just the danger in the box. Whether it's whether it's a cross, whether it's him going in, you just I feel more confident that he's going to get something on the ball, which is lovely to have. And um, especially going now into the last game of the season, having a bit more feeling of calm and not not the feeling of dread and fear before a game is um, is really nice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> even Antonio well, that, as well. Well, I did feel that. I I, felt I, had to, I I was feeling quite confident, and then obviously when that penalty happened against United, Antonio stepping up, and I think everyone everyone watching going. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on uh, but uh yeah he, he, got, he got his 10 goals in these so he's got his he's got his you know 750 well. bonus or whatever it was but um yes no uh yeah i think he put everyone everyone's heart, hearts are in our mouths but um no, yeah, so if he misses this yeah exactly <laughs> what, he's like oh happens? god oh. <laughs> this is gonna be a nasty place <laughs> he did a good job he did a good job though it was like you know proper down the middle wasn't it you know yeah calm. when noble sort of hit like you know pelts it a little bit he sort of dropped it in but uh yeah it's it's one of those things wasn't it you know he did the job and um we'll see what happens in the close season i suppose it really depends who goes up really um because obviously we're, yeah. we're looking at lots of championship players and um mm. obviously wigan you know we can nick robinson from wigan but obviously if brentford yeah up, then the couple of brentford as well as yeah there are definitely some good players to pick from if certain teams don't come up so yeah. see what happens and, and we could have and we could have dean garner back you know i don't know what's happening we don't know what's happening with him yet but um but yeah he's obviously been really good and he scored a great goal the other day as well which was which, was, which you know, kept him up and it took him up and it's nice to see yeah. and nice to see uh obviously have julian and and, um, and slav back at the London Stadium next year, so that'd be good as well. Hopefully, some fans will be in there to yeah. give them a clap. Um, we'll see what happens with that. But I'm not dream. Sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. I think that's a, I th that's what I've realised how much the fans are integral with football because it's like, are you are you a a FIFA sound on or off type person for football? 
I think I prefer the sound on, but really? I still don't feel like it's quite the same. The only reason is it, it feels a lot more like a training game or sort of a friendly when there is no sound. And if I'm not focusing on it enough, if I'm focusing enough on the gameplay, I don't particularly notice a huge amount. But it's just so different, isn't it? Like you said, the fans are what makes football and it's all about the, the game days and the atmosphere and you just can't replicate it as hard as, as, hard as you can try. It's just not it's quite true. the same. It's true, it's true. And, and even more so, like West Ham fans, obviously, that, you know... You know, we're not in it for the football. I know it's like my it's, that should be my my sort of my uh, my slogan. We're not in it. We're not in it for the football. We're never going to win the league. We know that. Um, but you're right. It's the it's the camaraderie, the atmosphere, going to the going to the pub, uh, all that stuff. I think people have really missed, um, particularly with the people I talk to, the fans on the channel and stuff. That's what they seem to really miss. And so it's nice to do things like this, and obviously do the watch alongs and. You know, you have Zoom calls and everyone sort of gets in and watches the game on the telly and, and sort of moans on the half time over the computer. But it's, um, yeah, I think actually we're doing, you know, it's, it's lovely to see all this sort of the West Ham family. We do talk about it quite a lot, but yeah. um, it's, it's really nice to see. Um, so for you, Holly, you know, obviously West Ham fan. Um, the first question I ask everyone is why? <laughs> why, is, why is West Ham your club? So, mine's a bit of a strange one. So, my, my dad's from Liverpool and is a devoted Liverpool supporter. And I'm born and bred, I know. <laughs> I know. What? Um, what? You, bat, you bat the wrong horse holes. Yeah. Bat the yeah. wrong horse. wrong horse. So, like, the first pictures of me are, like, three months old in some massive Liverpool shirt. And uh, there I have. I've just deviated from the plan. And then now I'm celebrating not getting relegated instead of <laughs> celebrating winning the league. <laughs> I've gone wrong. Um, so yeah, and my mum's a mad Watford fan. So I played football for Watford for years and I'd always loved football but never particularly followed one specific team and sort of mm. more enjoyed playing and I'd watch games but never really supported a team. And then I went to a West Ham game, honestly, I can't remember how old I was now, but I'd been watching so match of the day, any clips I could find on West Ham and for some reason I just sort of developed this soft spot for West Ham and the first time I went to West Ham game, just secured it. I don't know how to explain it. It was just everything, the, the atmosphere, the whole crowd. I'd been to Watford games before and it was completely different. There was just something that just clicked when I went to a West Ham game. Yeah. Just the difference in the, the songs that people were singing and so many things like that that just really got me. And from that point on, it was a it was a slippery slope. I was hooked and that was it. And then I met my boyfriend, Dan, who also supports West Ham, luckily. Um, that was it, really. So yeah, no escape now. I'm well yeah. and truly committed for many a year. <laughs> God, yeah, yeah, many years to come, I hope. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's funny, isn't it? How sometimes, you know, some people have stories and they they, they go and the stories are, oh, I was born in East Ham and da, da, da. some have stories were like, you know, I was watching Match Today and my dad went, what football team going to support? And I went, uh, that one. Yeah, and that one. it could have been anyone, um, yeah, like the Little Britain, oh, that one, um, <laughs> and. Uh, and and so and some just don't know why they're a West Ham fan, but it doesn't matter what happens. It, as you said, with you and your boyfriend and stuff, it just gets into your skin, doesn't it? It's like osmosis. And before you yeah. know it, you're like a season ticket holder for 25 years, and you're like, yeah. "How did that happen?" With your whole family in the process. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you disowned. Yeah, you disowned. Your dad disowned you. Yeah, your mum. It's like you know, it's like you're the uh, you're the lone wolf. But um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? How how it all works. But you said once you're in, you're in, and you know, you very rarely be able to get out. It's a bit like. Uh, like a cult isn't it really it's like, <laughs> one that we all love <laughs> it is one yes it's what it's, it says we go we have a church uh london stadium and uh or slash up some part beforehand and uh congregations and we go there for, for mass every sunday every saturday <laughs> or whenever they have the game no exactly but um with, with west ham obviously you know since you've been a, a fan um since you've been a disappointment to your parents and um <laughs> <laughs> and become a West Ham fan. Um, long before then. <laughs> yeah, long before then. I, I hope not, Holly. I hope not. Um, what? There must have been some sort of. You must have some highlights, some memories that stick in your mind about your your fan career at West Ham at the moment. Yeah. Well, the first time I went to Upton Park was once. I I'd watched so many videos. I didn't get to go to many games. I didn't really have a family that would be willing no. to come with me to Upton Park. So, um, so the first time I managed to get myself to a game with some friends, it was just seeing the stadium for the first time. I, it began before that, like the memories of just walking out of the park, train station, everything along the way, like pie and chips before the game, the burger vans that you'd like possibly get food poisoning from, but possibly not, you didn't care. 
Like there are just so many amazing bits that as weird as it is, that's kind of what really is my first memory and seeing the pit for the first time and when you start seeing bubbles and just everyone getting behind the team, the atmosphere was more than I could have ever imagined. And yeah. um, that's my first memory of just looking over that pitch and seeing the fans just singing the whole time and things like that that really just made it for me. So that's my main my main memory. And then obviously the last the last game at Upton Park I couldn't be at, but that game just sort of sums it all up to me. And obviously things have changed since and um, there's just yeah. Upton Park in general. Every game I went to, it was just that much of experience. That was what what in my overall sort of ultimate memory i suppose yeah, yeah, <laughs> the goal was in front of you. <laughs> and i was talking about it with somebody the other day actually down we used to go down green street and you see the burger vans and you said yeah. that you had the you know salmonella lottery or whatever it's called um what was is that smell you can't recreate that smell i mean I, you know of, of the of whatever meat they cooked you try it right. you know, it doesn't it's, i mean a barbecue it doesn't smell like a barbecue it just smells like mm-hmm. a burger van it, you know there's it, it so you know, I mean, you know, Ma might do stupid, uh, and Links do silly scents at the moment, don't they? Someone needs to do a burger van scent because it's a scent that like, you can't recreate. It's really weird. You obviously don't get it at London Stadium because you don't get the burger vans, you know, that sort of no. greasy spoon burger van. But uh, yeah, it's that <laughs> smell. I just remember it particularly as you, you know, by the supporters club, there was two burger vans on a very small road opposite each other. Yeah, either side. <laughs> You're thinking, is that turf war? It's like, you know, <laughs> it's like, it just didn't seem to make oh, sense, did it? It didn't seem to make sense. Right near each other. Yeah, Why not? exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah but you, you, you're right. And obviously things change. And you said back at the, you know, London Stadium and, you know, it's a beautiful stadium. And, uh, you know, I, I was I was all for the move. You know, obviously work, having yeah. worked there for so many years, it was, uh, yeah, I, know, I, I love it. And uh, it's weird at the moment because obviously I'm one of the 300 there. And it's really weird because, like, there's no, it is literally no one there. You know, I've been to yeah. some games where there have been maybe 200 fans um, for these under 23s games, but there's been no fans, and you can, apart from like me and stuff, obviously. But um, you can hear the journos typing as well, which is really weird. It's just even on their laptops <laughs> and their, on, their, on their posh Macs, and they can still hear the typing. But um, hopefully, <laughs> we'll get back. But actually, you know, the stadium's really, really, really sort of sorted to a. Uh, social distancing you know really because it's a bowl shape so you know i I would hope we get a fair few when we start i think october they said they're looking at starting fans coming in i don't know how they're going to sort that out but um yeah even just have some in there i think hopefully it would make that bit of difference and make it feel more like it's a normal normal game day kind of thing totally i mean that's that i mean interviewing a lot of the ex-players and and talking about you know having no atmosphere um, or no fans, not no atmosphere, no fans. Um, they they were like, yeah, it's really hard if you're not having a good day, or you're, I don't know, you're just not on on your on the metal. You're you're a bit bit ill maybe, but you're playing. Having the fans there just giving out a twenty percent, and um, it was obvious to me. Everyone, not just West Ham, but every Premier League team didn't really start restart really well. Really, it was quite wow. sloppy. Um, but the last few oh, weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, it also, I feel like it takes away slightly the um, the home advantage because I think, although obviously like the London Stadium, I feel like it's such a, a sort of amazing looking stadium that a lot of teams kind of go there and think it's going to be great to sort of play on this pitch. And I think the problem is when you then don't have the fans to sort of intimidate them, I guess in a way, it's um, it's I imagine a lot harder for our players to sort of mentally sort of come back from when you go behind or anything mm. like that and. It's, it's been strange. I don't know how much of an impact, obviously, the sort of not having fans makes an impact on game days for the away team, but I imagine it must make it a little bit more comfortable to play somewhere. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, it, you know, looking, I mean, you look at it, I mean, you've got things like, um, I mean, it's just silly when you think about it. I mean, I think was it the German, was it the Bundesliga? They did something and it was like, I don't know, 30% win rate, you know, for home and stuff like that, you know, and it's just weird things like that. But, um, now, yeah, I, I, I think when, when the season's finished, we'll have, there'll be someone, I'll probably sit down and work it out because, you know, I'm a bit geeky like things like that. But just, just to see the different, the impacts at home, because you're right, it's like, there's no fans, there's no intimidation, you know, it's, it, it's, it's more like a training game really, isn't it? And, you know, would we have gone to Man United and sort of, not, you know, I mean, apart from 10 minutes, that Man United game, we were pretty much comfortable. Would we have done yeah. that? 
you know, would we have done that if it was an old track? Would we have got the penalty? Or we would have, but you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It seems, you know, it's, <laughs> it just seems, yeah, you're right. It just, it's weird when you think about it, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, you look at teams like Sheffield United, I mean, they've, but clearly they've been they've just fallen off the wayside you know and 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 even walls to that extent you know they were flying high and and playing some good football and playing with confidence and clearly obviously the fans at Molyneux and at Bramall Lane made a big difference because they have they'd be, be a shadow of the team uh, where we yeah we're, <laughs> we're like where Antonio would be really like Antonio is like you know top goal scorer and uh they don't need to break every year to just come back and smash the last few games. Yeah, of the just to get his, just to get his ten goal bonus, really, by the end of the year more than anything. But uh, yeah, God forbid it doesn't happen again. But you, I know what you mean. But uh, anyway, what, so what we do with this channel? We, we digress. I love to. Do, we, we, we do chat a little bit. That's all fun. Um, we do thing called Hammers Eleven. So that's the idea of the channel. Um, so we obviously find out about your story why you become a West Ham fan. But then we go through your your eleven. So the idea is everyone has their own eleven. You know you write it on the back of a, a beer mat when you're chatting in the pub or whatever. Um, but it's 11 players that, you know, you've firstly been alive to see play. That's basic. That's the only criteria. The only reason is otherwise everyone would pick Bobby Moore, everyone would pick Billy Bonds, but you and me weren't around to see them. So, you know, it's not, it doesn't seem fair that we put them in, to be perfectly honest in, in this respect. Um, but apart from that, the criteria is whatever you want it to be. It doesn't matter. It's all about plays that mean something to you, whether it's positive or it might be negative as well. We've had some which are, you know, the, the disappointment 11, you know, things like that. But uh, <laughs> it's hard to see you. So we'll, we'll have a go with this. Always. We'll see what we can do, man. Um, right. Yep. So I also like to keep it to a 4 4 2, but I'm happy to be um, flexible. That's fine. Because now, now we're back on Zoom. I've got, I've got a different, I have two ways of recording. It's a Zoom, 442. The other one, you could have, you know, you could have done whatever. Um, right, so for, for Holly, let's go for uh, Between the Sticks. Who would be in goal for the Holly 11? Right, so I'm going to choose a team that sort of, some of them have more of a sentimental value, some yeah. of them performance-wise. Um, <laughs> I was going to say Roberto, just to see your reaction. Um, so I'm going to start with Fabianski for Between the Sticks. Yeah. And um, I think the main reason is just that he's been so consistent. When we didn't have him, we saw a difference it made. Um, it was a massive improvement on Adrian when we signed him. Um, obviously, Adrian's gone off to win the Premier League since, so <laughs> we might have missed out on a good one there. Um, but yeah, so just I think he's made such a difference in terms of the confidence as well that he seems to give the players around mm-hmm. him um, and communication. I think he's been massive for us over yeah. the last however long and made yeah, a big t- difference. Totally. Totally agree, and, and yeah, you know, hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? So, you know, we, we let uh, obviously uh, Adrian go, and we brought in Roberto, we brought in obviously David Martin, and the plan was sort of a clever plan, I thought. You know, send the two young lads, you know, send Trot and the other lad off, um, made sense, but unfortunately, it didn't pan out like that. <laughs> hindsight's <laughs> a great thing, <laughs> right? We'll put Fabianski in goal, uh, left back. Who should have left back, Holly? Left back, I'm going to say Cresswell, but not the current Cresswell, the Cresswell I think is he's not doing. Um, so it's, uh, it's a weird one at the moment because he's just not performing how I, I wish he could and I've seen him perform as well. And I think the main reason as well is that season with Pyatt, the way that you linked up with him, my memories of that season were just so exciting of, of what sort of what was possible every time he got the ball. Um, so yeah, mainly due to the last season at the Berlin, I'm going to say Cresswell. I'm hoping that he can pick it up again because at the moment it's a... Uh, not ideal, is it, the situation? Uh, no, I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, uh, that, that's Aaron. Uh, good old Cresswell wears a magic hat. Um, right back. Who got right back then, Holly? So, we haven't been blessed with the, uh, the greatest No, right we back, haven't, actually, no. So, I'm going to say Lucas Neal. Yep. Um, just for, obviously, strong tackles, great leader, captain. Um, and from what I've heard, all the players have always said that he's been amazing in the dressing mm. room. I think that that's so important in a team to sort of have someone like that around. Um, so, yeah, Lucas Neal. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's true, actually. I, when I interviewed um, Anton Ferdinand, he, 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 like, he couldn't say anything. It, it was like he was like rat waxing lyrically about Lucas Neal, you know, as, as a captain, <laughs> as a man. It was lovely to hear. But um, And he talked about a lot of things which I didn't, know about Lucas Neal um, in terms of you know 
player stuff and it was really interesting yeah but yeah he's a lovely lovely guy and apparently an absolutely fantastic captain um like a team captain as well as a captain on the pitch um but we'll put lucas new in uh center back so we're gonna have for your first center back then holly so i'm gonna start with ginge james collins yeah um we used to call him ball magnet because every single cross used to just find his head somehow yeah. so he's you just felt comfortable with him sort of in defense and yeah, obviously he went went to went to Villa, didn't he? And he came back and yeah. lost claret and blue. And he's just one of those that, yeah, strong tackles again, which is always what I'm a big fan of in defence. No nonsense. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what you mean? He's like um, he. I think I preferred him in his second spell than his first spell, um, just because I think he came back a bit more, a bit more grit. You know, a bit more sort of veteran. A bit rougher. <laughs> yeah, he had a skinhead, and we love we love a skinhead player as well. So uh, yeah. it all <laughs> it all helped. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Uh, I put Ginge in, um, and who's Ginge going to partner in the middle then, Holly? He's going to partner with Ferdinand, Rio Ferdinand. Yep. And um, I think the reasons for that is obviously came up really academy. Um, just solid, and you could rely on him. Um, I think it's a shame, obviously, that. I just wish we could have kept him for longer because he went on to have such a successful career. But um, yeah, I just think that's definitely who I'd want at the back of Ginge. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, yeah, it's not much much to say about Rio to be honest. Really. It's like you know, you're you're totally right. He's uh, a lovely guy. It's weird, isn't it? Some players that they leave. And you don't still think of him as a West Ham player. But we are, I always do. Even when he was playing for like Man United and, and England, he was still like a West Ham boy. I never had that yeah. same effect with other players. But Rio, you just did. Um, it was strange. You're right. We, if, if we had another couple of seasons, I think uh, he would have developed even more. Because I think uh, by going to Man United, I think stifled part of his sort of ball playing side he was more about the defence Alex Ferguson like defenders rather than necessarily ball players and um, yeah. and yeah it would have, I think he would have been it had an even more well, he had a great career but an even greater career in terms of a, a player I think he just stayed with us for a couple of years but anyway no bitterness there okay. <laughs> <Fine. laughs> I know alright let's let's, uh, let's go to midfield then let's go uh, left midfield left wing who are we going to have on the left then Holly left wing I'm going to say, in the field, quiet. It's got yep. to be quiet. Yeah. It's just the pure excitement. Every time he's on the ball, um, his confidence, his free kicks. He's the player that I've seen live that the most that I've literally, every time he's got the ball, I've been like, oh, go on. Like, just, you just felt like any magic can happen at any moment. Obviously, it was yeah. a shame how things ended and when he left, but I just felt like he, he made everyone around him a better player. Um, he literally made everyone, we look like, we look like a Barcelona when we're around him sometimes. And to have a player that can do that, he was just so talented as an individual. So, yeah. Yeah, you're right. He was one of the, um, he was one of the ones which, I mean, I said it before, when, when like my mates who weren't West Ham fans, when you talked about, you know, you're playing West Ham, you might be Tottenham fans or Arsenal fans, Liverpool fans, he's the only player I can remember. And they've all, being gutted that he's playing for us, not for them. Do you know what I mean? He was like the man. You know, we di- we don't really have never had a player who was the man in the Premier League, and he was. You know, I mean, it, Christ, he was like nominated Ballon d'Or. You know, yeah. and how many? That's that never happened. exactly has never happened. <laughs> so it's like it's um, no, he was brilliant. I mean, I agree. He's he's the best technical player I've seen at West Ham. Um, just I think he just it was an honour for him to to watch him um, during that sort of last season at the Upton Park and obviously the first season-ish, half a season at uh, the London Stadium. Um, yep, Payet. Let's go the other side. Let's go right wing, right midfield then, Holly. Um, Joe Cole. Joe Cole. Yeah. Um, just his celebrations. He was just so happy to score. <laughs> so, so many great memories. Like when that, that one way he scores, he just stops and leans into the crowd. Like things like that that just always stick in my mind as an image and um, yeah. just a player that really excites me I suppose and yeah that's just a brilliant player how we ever got relegated with him I'll never know <laughs> no <I don't. laughs> so cold going there. legend yeah he is and 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 I think he talks so so well when he does his commentary and analysis on BT Sport and stuff I think he's, there's a real 
footballing mind there you know i don't know we know there is but you know some people are, don't articulate themselves very well when it comes to you know might be great players but they can't articulate themselves in an analysis role or commentary role and joe does so clearly he's going to be a fantastic manager or coach um later down the line and who knows who knows i'd love him to come back that Can would uh, pretty much make my life funnily enough dan's named his cat so dan's cat is about 10 years old now and um, but called joey after joe cole so brilliant love <laughs> it love it, love it. <laughs> all right let's put joey and let's go into the central midfield positions then who's your first center mid then holly first one i'm gonna say notes yep um just mr west ham isn't he just a yeah. Leader, I think I know he gets a lot of stick for being sort of slow and passing back a fair amount, but I do think he holds it together. And sometimes when you don't have him on the pitch, you notice the impact that that actually has, um, and just his ability to I think motivate those around him. He might not be the youngest or fastest anymore, but um, yeah, just so many so many appearances. And I do think we'll miss him massively when he retires, and I hope that he's one of those that may well come back to the club in another capacity. A long time down the line. I don't know if it's something he's interested in at the moment, but yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So absolutely love notes. Yeah, he is. He's just like he just loves the club in it, and it's like I think. Well, everyone says he does. You know, no, yeah, everyone's like, oh yeah, be like, he actually does. You know, I've seen it firsthand how much when he's not playing, he's kicking every ball on the touchline and stuff, and he's just a lovely bloke as well. And I just think he's a bit like old school. In that respect, I think, you know, like, you know, the Brookings and Bonds of this world, they were fantastic gentlemen off the pitch as well. And Mark's one of them players as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, when I interviewed Kevin Keane, he did say that he was um, talking to Mark about taking up a, a coaching role after he's finished. And uh, he's a bloody good coach. Because, I mean, you know, not being funny, the kids, who would you listen to more? Kevin Keane, who they've never heard of, or Mark Noble, who's played over 500 times for the club that you're playing for at the moment or you're supporting. And, uh, yeah, I hope he'll carry on a long time. Um, uh, he's one of those, I don't think, he's like a, you know, like when you have like a dog lead and it's like, you can't go more than like five metres. I think that's going to be like Mark. I don't think that you is. could go more than five metres away from London Stadium. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, back. <laughs> Feed that him is. back in, isn't it? Um, yeah. So who's, who's Nobes going to partner in the middle then, Holly? It's going to be Rice. Um, yeah. So I just think he's so important for us. I, I have everything for us that we can keep him because... Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I don't want to see him play for any other Premier League team ever. That would break my heart a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I just think he's just an up-and-coming leader. Obviously, he's had a chance of being captain now. At some point, it looks like that will or should be his. Um, I just hope that we can hold on to him because he's only getting better and he's got so much potential. So I, I don't think we could get a replacement for him at the moment. And I just don't think that there's anyone that's a better fit. And also, he's so passionate about the club as well, which I really hope sort of gives us the opportunity to keep him for longer. We know he's an amazing player and we know that maybe West Ham might not always keep the best players or be the best in the league. We might not win the league next year. <laughs> but I'd, I'd love to keep him. But I just think he's really exciting as well. And just the way that he disperses the ball and going into those last ditch tackles and things like that, you, you very rarely see him make a mistake. Mm. Um, and when he does, you forgive it because of the other 5,000 things he's done in the last however many months that have been yeah. brilliant. So, yeah, yes. great. You're right, and the last few games has been stonking, and he? he's been absolutely stonking the last few games. And um, I don't think it's a coincidence that he that you know he two best games probably were the Chelsea game and maybe the Newcastle game, both games where he was captain. And um, I just think, I mean, to be honest, I'd, I'd offer him the captain's role today, you know, and just say, look, you know, because Mark's not going to be around forever, but Dick, you know, could you imagine if we end up getting five, 500 games out of Dick? I mean, it won't happen, but <laughs> it would be lovely, wouldn't it? It'd be different. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'm, I think you should do. I think you should like form a legacy at West Ham and, and be Mr. the new Mr. West Ham and stay in. Of course, I'm going to say that because I want to stay, but you know what I mean? It just, it'd be different than having to just go to Chelsea and they do a Ross Barkley and ruin him and or Scott Parker yeah. and ruin him and, I just think he could, he'll be a big fish in a small pond at West Ham. And um, yeah. the way he talks with the other players as well, yeah. he, he wants, he's been doing it for a long time, but more so now, he's communicating so well with everyone around him. He's got all the leadership qualities. And again, I think as West Ham fans, all we want is someone that just loves the club and gives everything on the pitch, isn't yeah. it? And 
he does that. So, yeah. You're right. And for someone so young to have that level of confidence to do it and the respect the other people have, the other team members have to listen to him, tell them, you know, because it's, <laughs> it's all right talking, but if you don't listen, then don't listen yeah. to him. There's, there's nothing. It's just, you know, some blo- it's just noise. But uh, no, I know what you mean about deck and uh, we'll see. I think, you know, I think the signing of Suchek, um, you know, shows that, you know, there's, there's, there's a midfield we're trying to build there and, you know, him and Rice as a partnership will be great. And then Nobes coming in as and when we need that extra steal in midfield or he drops out and Lanzini comes in or Fournells or Snoddy. You know, there's that other, there's a third spot in that midfield three, really, which you could um, interchange. It's quite a nice way of, of working, but uh, we'll see what happens. We never know. You, you, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> Exactly, we can just hope for the best and uh, just keep him locked away in a, in a, in a store cupboard until uh, <laughs> mid, mid-September or whatever. Um, right, OK, we'll put Rice in. Let's go up front. Who have you got as your, who's got your first striker then, Holly? So, your first striker, Carlos. Yes. Tevez, uh, part of the great escape. I still don't know how we got him. <laughs> just, yeah, one of those players that, yeah, he has to be in my lineup. Absolutely has to be. First goal against Spurs, just so many, so many great memories of him. And just again, the way that he celebrates and yeah, so many great memories of Kevin. I can't even can't even list them. <laughs> yeah. And he did. He, I mean, you know, he sort of came out of nowhere. No, not came out of, I mean, he did come out of nowhere, but you know, for the first few games, he didn't really do much, first few months really, and then then he just went on this amazing run, didn't he? For like six months and was just well, it was unstoppable, really, wasn't it? And he was, he was just so much energy, so entertaining to watch, and uh, yeah, no, it was just yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was I, you know, when I talked to players uh, and and coaches around that era, around that time, talking about the Tevez deal, you know, what happened, what was it like, and they go. Do you know what? It's weird. You know, they just turned up and, you know, training one day and then these two Argentine internationals were just in, <laughs> just like <laughs> in the changing room. They're like, but apparently Carlos really did more than Mascherano. He, um, Mascherano, rather. Um, he, Carlos really tried to integrate himself in with the West Ham like players. So he would go on, like Anton told me stories, he'd go on nights out with them to like, nightclubs in London but he would take his translator with him um, so you can just imagine this sort of like guy in a suit with glasses and you know just the translator Carlos is really going through it on the uh, on the dance floor and you can just see that you know Argentinian flair you know coming out and, yeah in the dance floor but uh, no he's a lovely guy all right yeah Carlos who's Carlos going to partner up front then Holly man has to be the canio yeah. absolutely got to be um she's so passionate about the game wasn't he absolutely mad but incredible um yeah. just love the club he's even got a west ham tattoo hasn't he i think yeah yeah he's eight. Yeah, yeah, so. eight us, yeah yeah <laughs> so it's just that goal against wimbledon the scissor kick so many of his goals that again that i've, I've really watched the footage so many times over the years but just those moments that you never you never quite forget um yeah. and his personality more than anything i think absolutely unforgettable so he has to go my own. Hey, he's one of those players who's just like I call him like box office he's like a box office player do you know what I mean I mean Pyatt is technically the best player I've ever seen at West Ham but for me Di Canio was the best player because you it's like a pie chart you need the technical ability you need the passion you need the entertainment value and he just entertained us doesn't he he's like you didn't know and you just need that like 5% of what's he going to do today? You know, like literally genius and madman, you know, being on that knife edge and he was just like that. And no, I, yeah, it's brilliant. And you, and you're right. It's, 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 for him, there were so many different, I mean, those seasons he was at, he was at the club, every game, something happened. He might have had a strop or he might score a hat trick or, you know, be mesmeric or pick the ball up when it, the Everton game when the goalkeeper was down. All these things, and uh, but it was every game. It was every game with him. And uh, no, he was loved. No, yeah, I, I loved him. He was one of my. He was my favourite player. Pyatt was my best technical player, but he was my favourite player overall at West Ham, um, just because I think he, he just brought so much, so much to the club. As you said, the man's inked himself, you know, for us. So what can you do? I mean, I, I haven't even got a West Ham tattoo. And no, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. So, oh, you never knew what he was capable of, like. 
things that other players would never even try, like that Chelsea goal where he flicks it up outside the box and just absolutely fires it into the back of the net. Things like that that you just don't typically see. And totally. like you said, picking the ball up in that game and things like that that it was just entertaining at the same time yeah. and you just fell in love with him. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was a good play. And, and that, that rounds off your team nicely, Horseman. It's been lovely chatting to you. It's been really nice. We got there eventually. We got there eventually. <laughs> Wi-Fi is always handy for that. <laughs> yeah, don't matter. It's all good and game, all good games. We, we, we all sort it out eventually. And um, thanks, thanks, really, thanks for your time, Holly. Because uh, I, I know you, I know you're busy again now because you, you're all, uh, you're all back at work and stuff. So yeah, nice and busy. But yeah, exactly. Wonderful use of my afternoon. <laughs> it's it's the one Zoom call everyone wants to take, so it's okay, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously thank you to everyone else for watching you know like share subscribe do the usual thing and until next time for me and holly take care everyone stay safe come on you irons big game on sunday come on you irons see you all bye-bye take care